in terms of the the most important uh, scientific discovery to come out of my group, uh, there was a acute moment, a eureka moment, so to speak, and and this was in 1994, and by that time, my colleagues and I have been immersed in AIDS research already, and we realized that for any given patient with HIV infection, his or her viral load or the amount of virus in the blood tends to remain rather constant over time. And, and we've been thinking about that. Why does it remain constant? Uh, and gradually we re realized that it, it was a what we call a dynamic equilibrium. That is the amount of the virus being made is approximately equal to uh, the amount of virus being cleared. Um, so it was a steady state. And then the Eureka moment came when we had the opportunity to administer new drugs to HIV infected people. And then uh, within weeks of doing so, we collected the data and showed that viral low actually dropped precipitously. And of course, that is a great outcome for the patient and for the doctor. But the question that we posed was, why does it drop? And why does it drop in that acute manner? And, and this is where my quantitative background in physics applied, is that we, we realized that we could actually write that out mathematically in a straight uh, forward differential equation that AP high school uh, student uh, would be able to do. And from there, you, fitting the data and doing the calculation, we were able to come up with the idea that, that it was a, we were using the drugs to block virus infection and production, and therefore the precipitous decline reflect the fact that the virus was constantly being clear at a very rapid rate. And so using that quantitative background, we were able to calculate what the turnover of virus was all the time in a given uh, infected person. And that number turned out to be enormously large. So the virus was just replicating away at a rapid clip. And from there, uh, we also knew that HIV changes every time it replicates. So high replication rate met high error rate, and therefore HIV was able to mutate very quickly. And we could then do the additional calculation to show that, well, if you treat this virus with one or two drugs at a time, the virus is predictably going to mutate and escape from the action of the drugs. But at the same time, we could also calculate what it would take to, keep, to corner the virus so it's not able to escape. And those calculations suggested to us that three or more drugs would do the trick. And so we knew that by 1995 and, and, and launched a series of experiments in patients using what is now called a cocktail therapy of three drugs or more. And, um, Immediately, within weeks, we saw the good result, but we wanted to wait to see if the results could be sustained. And it was only um, by middle of 1996 we realized that we were able to keep the virus below detection level uh, for a good year. Uh, and that uh, opened up the door for, for what is called combination therapy today. I'm not sure there was one moment that sparked my interest in, in math and sciences. I think, as far as I could recall, I have always had some interest in, in these areas. Um, I certainly remember being a very curious uh, child, and perhaps th that, has, uh, that is a precursor to pursuing science. Um, but I think there's also quite a bit of family influence that uh, affected me gradually, uh, and, and that has to do with having a number of uh, uh, important family members who pursue science or engineering, including my father and a very uh, important uncle. Uh, and they, their interest in, in technology and in sciences, I think, uh, uh, had a great deal of influence on my decision ultimately to, to pursue science. 
Um, in terms of the math education in Taiwan, it was quite intense. And so the math that I had learned by sixth grade served me pretty well until about eighth or ninth grade here in the U.S. Uh, in terms of science education, we didn't have that much formal science uh, in Taiwan. And I began to be exposed to that uh, in the later years in, in middle school and, of course, in high school. And uh, so I think I was first grounded in math and then gradually shifted into the sciences. Um, that's what I remember. <laughs> Uh, my career did not go as planned. Uh, initially, as I said, my interest was in physics, but through my college education, I saw the coming of new biology and, and, and the promises of biomedical research. So I, I shifted my interest from physics to, to life sciences and, and ultimately went to medical school uh, with the idea that I would somehow pursue uh, medical research. And my real focus in, in uh, medicine did not come until some time later when I was uh, doing my clinical training, uh, when I first encountered uh, patients with what we now call AIDS. And that sparked a real interest in me, and I have pursued that uh, kind of research ever since now, 1982. I, I was initially interested in cardiology, but gradually I realized uh, infections affect many, many people throughout the world, and uh, many of the infections are actually uh, manageable or treatable, and we could make an impact. And I, in particular, I was uh, uh, interested in, in new infections that uh, plague the world. And uh, when I was doing my medical training, there were a number of new uh, infections that emerge, including what we call Legionnaire's disease and Lyme disease today. But uh, as I was finishing medical training, I encountered some of the earliest cases of HIV AIDS, and I realized that was a fascinating um, scientific challenge in, in terms of trying to understand what was the underlying cause. Uh, but I did not realize that it would become a major public health problem until some time later. Well, I was uh, doing my chief medical year uh, as chief resident in, in internal medicine in the west side of Los Angeles when the very first case was a young homosexual man who presented to the hospital with a multitude of problems. Uh, all of which suggests that his immune system was not functioning very well. And that was curious to me because he was not getting any chemotherapy or radiation or any drugs that would suppress the immune system. It was immediately clear that we were looking at something new because uh, such a case was never described in the textbooks. And, and then... Uh, he was treated for his acute problems, but only to die a few weeks later. And then another case that was quite similar came in, and another, and another. In rapid succession, we, we had five such cases. And um, it was too much of a coincidence to, uh, to observe this, and we realized that something was going on with a common theme. And from their medical history, it was pretty clear that it was a transmissible disease. And uh, the search was on to hunt down that, that microbe that uh, was the underlying cause. 